Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we're gonna work on these very expensive, kind of complex air compressors, but they're really not that bad. We're gonna go ahead and go through the insides, show you how they're supposed to work, and I've got one that is definitely got a serious problem. Let's go ahead and take a look. Coming up next, right here, on Better Biomed. All right, guys, this is the June Air Ultra Quiet Air Compressor. And you can see that I have the accessory rails on the side pulled off because that's one of the ways that we're gonna pull the lid off. It's a simple air compressor. You have a pressure regulator, pressure gauge, and you've got an hours timer and your air filter right on the front. On the back, pretty simple. You got your main power switch. You have your IEC for 115 volt. And these guys only pull like just a few amps, really. Yeah, 4.8 amps right there. And that is your pressure output. So these are used in patient care environments because they're ultra quiet and because uh, they are self-maintaining for the most part. So when you turn one of these devices on, they have an auto purge cycle, which is controlled by these electronic solenoids up here in the top. And it goes through this little cycle where it opens up one of them and it closes the other one. And then as it purges a certain amount of moisture from this tank, then it will close the one and it'll start building pressure. And you can all see that on the gauge. So the real layout for this guy, let's see. Well, let's go ahead and let's start from the IEC on this side. And it's really nicely laid out, European wiring code. You can see the brown and the blue, brown is the hot. And an open terminal block right here. So watch yourselves if you guys ever open these guys because it does have exposed connections. You have a temperature switch right here. So this guy here is going to kill it if it gets too hot. And you can see it's all in series. See so how it comes here, it goes there, it goes there, right? And that goes down to your control module and to your front control panel, right? So that would be your status indicators on the front. This right here is your uh, power switch. So it closes those and brings AC mains in, which I should watch it because it is currently plugged in. <laughs> and right here, this is your uh, your main contactor for the device. So you can see off and on, but it also serves as another function. When you switch it to the off position, it purges. So you will not have constant pressure on the system if you switch it to the off position internally. Now, externally, you can you can kill it back here and it will maintain pressure. But if you go internally and you flick it to the off position, it will vent the system, all right? So on auto, it goes to certain set points, which there should be a set of micro switches in here, which controls both your uh, low pressure cut on and your high pressure cut off. That should be inside here. I haven't taken one of these apart, but just to be sure. So uh, right here, we have a water separator. You can see right there, that's your pressure. And inside this reservoir right here is the actual compressor and you can barely see it um, right here. And mind you, these are live wires, so I gotta watch it. Um, so the compressor is housed inside this noise canceling box. And that's because it's an ultra quiet. You're talking 40, maybe 50 decibels when this thing's running. It is so quiet. So your compressor's in there, it kicks on, these two uh, valves right here, they will switch their positions. They have LED indicators and you can adjust their on time. So if you want it to purge a little bit longer, if you're in a high humidity environment, you can actually turn this guy up. I don't know what the OEM says about that, but you can, because right there's the controls. So when it's energized, they'll switch from a normally open to normally closed condition or normally closed to normally open. You can adjust that and you adjust their duration right here. So the compressor compresses the air it goes up into this intercooler, which then uses some of the cooling air from the compressor to kind of uh, cool down the compressed air where it goes down into your thermostatic valve and down into your reservoir. Now you want to condense as much as possible because as you condense, your moisture is going to separate from the air, which is going to be a good thing because the last thing you want is this guy to be blasting out uh, moist air. 
medical air you want to be as dry as possible. So here you have a purge. So this guy here will come up to one of these guys. Um, so it will purge and you have your safety valve right here, which you see I'm pulling on it. There's nothing going on there. You have a motor start run capacitor. I like how it's nice and accessible right here on the side. Very good. Um, and over here, this is your input. So this is your incoming air and that is a muffler. That is because your compressor, uh, it oscillates the air and just the oscillation of the air itself uh, generates excessive noise. So they added a muffler to the air input. So it's a pretty neat and simple device. It works on its own. So when they get energy, they uh, go into their function until they're done with that function based on the timer. And then it goes into total compression, which we'll hear in just a moment. And here you can see they have an, an auto purging water trap. It's so right there. I think that one comes down maybe up into this one of these guys over here. But auto purging water trap. So you can see that it's plumbed. Very cool. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what a cycle should sound like. So what you are hearing, if I were to block the, comp uh, the compressed air on the exit, you would hear it's actually a super quiet, super quiet compressor, right? Uh, let's see. Now I got my doohickey over in this guy. Hold on. There we go. So with compressors, you have to occlude the output in order to test them out because it's a compressor. It, it compresses things. Just They don't operate based on flow. They operate based on their pressure capabilities. So what I have here is a little fitting that has got a uh, little uh, leak stop. So it has to have a male fitting to go in there to open it up. So it's basically an occluded fitting. So now I can see pressure. See, we have power. This is uh, air light indicating a problem. So you notice how it wasn't venting or it wasn't building pressure. It was venting internally to a drip pan, which is located underneath. You can see it down there. So it purges the moisture from the tank for a certain duration. And then it goes to that tank in the bottom. And then it starts building pressure. And it builds pressure quickly and quietly, which is its job. Let's go ahead and vent it. It's a small reservoir, so luckily it builds pressure and it removes pressure quickly. There we go. All right. So I'm going to open it up so you guys can take a look at these guys right here and you can see how they function when it's running the cycle. They only last about five seconds and then they switch their state, right? Here we go. You can see it's in the off condition right here. And then you see this one here is in the on condition and it just switched. Ta-da! There you go. So that's it purging. Notice, even with the cover off, it's super quiet. There's a lot of noise dampening, even in air. The company, June Air, took a lot of extra conditions to make sure it's as quiet as possible. So that is a normal system. Let's go take a look at this guy over here. Now this one, I, I honestly didn't see anything wrong with it. I will do some other checks on it just to be sure, but it should be a maintenance free compressor. I believe so. I mean, I don't think that there's, it's an oil compressor. It's probably maintenance free, which means it's got like Teflon pistons, but this guy here sounds like it's okay. Now this one, yeah, she's a little dirty. Uh, I haven't cleaned her up yet. I, you know, when we do PMs, we clean uh, these guys right here, your condensers. And, you know, we do pressure checks and we check all the fittings. But this guy has got some extra problems. Let's go ahead and plug him in. So I want you to pay attention to the sound it creates when it's powered up. Because there is something going on right here. And I will show you what's going on in just a moment. Hear that? So that's not typical solenoid vibrations. There is something else going on there. And for safety sakes, let's go ahead and disconnect this guy. This guy right here, uh, believe it or not, I've already gone through and seen 
what's really going on. So let's go ahead and disconnect this relay. This is the auto purge solenoid. So let's go ahead and disconnect him, sit him off to the side. So this guy here is just a plug. It's just an interface with the timing mechanism. Doesn't really do very much. The physical piece is actually done by the solenoid uh, coil, which is down here. In order to remove that, we have a cap, which is a retainer. I pull that cap off, and then the solenoid valve body, or the coil itself, just kind of slides off. So what you are hearing, and let's see if we can get a light in there so you can see it. So I don't know if you can see it in there. There is a black soot. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, this is a non-moving part, so you should not see any soot or anything normally on the uh, solenoid body or inside the coil. And the reason that this is happening is because what it is doing is it is electrically arcing through the solenoid to the system. And I've already wiped some of it off, but right here, right here is where it's arcing. And you can see some evidence of arcy sparks to the valve body, which is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I've never seen that in my career, that it's arcing like that. So if you see a residue inside a solenoid like that, it shouldn't be there because that is not a moving part. The moving parts are inside the dingle hopper down there. Anyway, so it's, it's really not that bad of a repair. The coil obviously has to be changed out, but also so does the solenoid moving components, which are down here inside this guy. So the whole thing is bought as a unit. It is electrically arcing mains to ground. This is technically uh, very unsafe. So this is one of those situations where if the ground plug was broken and we were in here touching anything, even the edge of the case right here, I would be getting absolutely lit because it is arcing mains, which this guy operates on mains. You can see right here, voltage 115 volts. So it's arcing mains over to chassis, which is ground. And that is the arcy spark sound that you hear. So when you energize a coil and when you de-energize a coil is when there's two voltage spikes internally. And those voltage spikes have broken through the insulation. You can kind of see it inside the, the body right there. You can see the dark spots where it's arcing away to ground. <sighs> anyway, guys, I've never seen a problem like that before. It's interesting. It's a simple fix, really. It doesn't really require very much, and the part should be readily available. But I should go to tell you, you have to check those ground connections, and you have to make sure your electrical safety is on point, because these devices that operate on mains can be fatal if you're losing your ground conductor. It's kind of crazy. It's a pretty reliable little air compressor, and you find them all throughout like physical therapy spaces and other medical areas like laboratories, but it's just one of those things. I've never seen a solenoid fail like that before, where it arcs through the insulation to ground. Kind of crazy, but it does exist. So anyway, guys, that is the June Air. I've got a couple of them here. I'm going to service. I'm going to get them back up and going and uh, make these customers happy. All right, little, little FYI on air compressors. Thanks for watching, guys.